Vaughn, and get back to the housing data. Top story of today, many investors fearing a double-dip recession. But could it be even worse than that? Huh. Gluskin chef <laughs> economist uh, David Rosenberg joins us now on the fast line. And David, your call of the day here is that uh, we may actually be in a depression. Why? Well, uh, what a depression is is just a, uh, a prolonged uh, recession. Uh, and uh, the reason I say that is because despite everything that the government has done uh, to try and underpin the housing market, uh, you know, there's at least eight different programs that have been implemented the past couple of years. And mortgage rates uh, through the heavy hand of the Fed are down to their lowest levels ever and down 100 basis points. You still can't put a floor under the housing market. I mean, under a normal recessionary circumstance, uh, all these efforts would have borne fruit and we'd be off to the races on the housing side. So I guess we have to come to another term when you have this dramatic government incursion and stimulus mm -hmm. and intervention and uh, we still can't seem to find the bottom in the sector that actually brought about uh, the economic downturn to begin with. Right, and, and we should note, of course, that housing has led the U.S. out of recession seven, seven of the last eight times. David, you know, with uh, this ongoing recovery, shall we say, uh, there have been more calls and comparisons to Japan. And in your morning note today, you actually uh, cite a New York Times editorial uh, that uh, evokes some Japan comparisons. Are you actually saying that, that maybe this is a possibility? And if so, that would imply a secular bull market for bonds here. Well, I mean, I was actually uh, drawing the comparisons to Japan, uh, where I was being absolutely vilified, uh, you know, back when I was uh, at Merrill a couple of years ago. And uh, it's it's actually a little scary to see uh, how things have played out, and, and the fact that you even have uh, at least one Fed official drawing the comparisons. Now, you know, no, no two cycles are the same, but I think what uh, we're starting to see is that, you know, this is not a classic garden variety manufacturing inventory recession caused by inflation or the Fed tightening policy. This is a balance sheet recession. It's a debt deleveraging. These animals uh, are different in nature. I think Japan is a very extreme uh, case of a debt deleveraging cycle that's taken 20 years. I don't think it's going to be that long, uh, you know, here in the States. But I, I don't think it it doesn't pay to be delusional or be an ostrich with your head in the sand. Right. Uh, see this for what it is. We still have, we've been uh, destroying bad debt the past couple of years. The excess credit that we created, that gave us that artificial recovery for five years. And people think we're going to expunge this in just a year or two. That's not how history plays out. It, it, is, we, it is ironic, David, that you said you were vilified by your colleagues at Merrill. It is Bank of America Merrill Lynch um, economist today making that comparison in a note this morning. Brian Kelly, I know you got a question. Hey, Dave, Brian Kelly. Uh, when I look at the M1 multiplier, it, it shows that for every dollar the Fed's pumping in the economy, only 85 cents is being created. At the extreme, that says to me we're borrowing more money than the economy can actually uh, create. Why doesn't that lead to a sovereign debt crisis in the U.S.? I know you've been somewhat bullish on bonds. Well, I don't know if it has any implications for a sovereign debt crisis. What it's telling you is uh, that, you know, this is the proverbial pushing on a string. Uh, you know, the, the Fed cut the funds rate to zero in December of 08, still couldn't put a floor under the economy or the capital markets, and then the Fed uh, drastically expanded its balance sheet. And part of that, of course, meant uh, infusing funds into the banking system. So normally, you'd infuse funds into the banking system at rock bottom rates uh, with the hope that they're going to lend it out. And here the banks are sitting on $1.3 trillion of cash, uh, and uh, <laughs> instead of lending it out to Mon Pa, uh, they're actually, in the past couple of months, have been using it to play the yield curve and buy government bonds. Now, we know that in the Fed loan officer surveys, the banks are saying that they're using their credit standards. So, you know, maybe this isn't the case where the, you know, where the evil banks are being overly stringent, not lending money. Maybe this is a case where, especially in the household sector, uh, they've been so scarred uh, by the trauma that hit their balance sheet from the 30% slide in right. real estate prices. Then, of course, look at the debt delinquencies and defaults. Uh, I mean, this whole experiment and experience we had with excessive leverage at the margin, not for everybody, but at the margin, has left misery in its wake. I mean, the delinquency rates on consumer loans and on mortgage debt mm -hmm. went to levels that you hadn't seen since the 1930s. David. And this has a tremendous psychological impact on the desire on the part of consumers or households to take on credit. This David, is actually we, we, we beyond just economics. We're talking about real psychological trauma here, much like you had, by the way, 
in the 1930s. David, wish, David, wish we why, had more time, not David. Those money multipliers improve. We got, we got it. We got to leave it there. David Rosenberg, thanks so much for joining us. We do appreciate it. His call of the day here is that we might be in a depression simply because it's going to be a longer right. recession. Um, but still, very sobering words. Very sobering, very depressing. And I, I think <laughs> the one thing yeah. I would point to is the one th element that actually gives some, in, you know, something of encouragement is every time we see the volatility index spike up towards 27, 28, it falls back. Institutions come in and start selling it, yeah. meaning they're looking for us to start bottoming slightly, at least temporarily, and go to the upside. And Melissa, in addition to that, how about the strength in manufacturing, the strength in corporate earnings? Both of those suggest this is not a depression. It's probably not even a double dip recession. Okay. Uh, we got to take a break here. Got more halftime reports straight ahead.